as you guys can see from the title. Today we're going to do my palettes that I use for the month of May. First and foremost, happy new month. As you guys know, this is mid-year end of school year, beginning of summer, and it is my birthday month. I'm so excited because I could see the light at the end of the tunnel and summer is literally around the corner. The longest day of the year is coming up and that is one of my favorite days of the year. So as you guys can see, I'm super happy, super cheery, super bright, super bright as far as my personality, not my clothing or my eye look. I am here to share with you guys palettes that I pulled out this past month. This past month, I didn't pull out as many as I typically do, but there's a reason why. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a change for the summertime. So I'm gonna give you guys a heads up at the end of the video. So if you're interested to see what palettes I pulled out for this past month, stay tuned. Okie dokie, you guys. I actually pulled most of these palettes out with my members this past month. I thought it was a lot of fun to include them to see what their input was. I did go back and pull one more palette out after I filmed that video. And I kept it that way because I knew that the time of year of me wearing a lot of eye heavy makeup is going to be subsiding. It's gonna be more of like cheek, glowy, bold lips, and minimal eye makeup. So that's my intention for the next few months when it comes to this type of video. But I still want to share with you guys what I'm pulling out because it still holds me accountable to see what I am using in my collection. So in no particular order, I'm gonna share with you guys the palettes that I used this past month. I will tell you that every single palette in front of me, I only used one time. I did struggle a little bit this past month to reach for palettes that were not in Project Pans, mainly because one, I got lazy too. Again, I was doing the whole minimal eye look. Like this is what I've been wearing most days just because it's easy to the point. I could change the lip color, make it bold, make it subtle, make it a gloss and just move on with my day. Typically this is what I do in the summertime because I am outside gardening, playing in the dirt, playing in sand, playing in some sort of body of water. So I'm not really doing a lot of intricate eye looks and I don't wanna have heavy makeup outside while I'm sweating. Very humid where I live in the summer. We are a very outdoorsy family. So I have to keep that in mind whenever I use makeup in the summertime, unless I'm going somewhere fancy, that's a different story. Alrighty guys, so let's get started in no particular order. I pulled out the Lorac Pro Palette Artist Edition Meraki. I keep calling Makari, it's Meraki, I guess guess is how you say it. This one comes with, I believe, 24 eyeshadows. I can't remember how many, but I just dropped the insert in here where it has all the names on them. This is what this palette looks like. This is such a pretty palette. One, I love the this, this shape and the size of these palettes. Easy to the point, a brush can get in here. You're not getting a large pan where it's going to feel intimidating or taking forever to use. These are beautiful and the shimmers really pack a impact on your eyes, whether you wet them, you put them with your finger or with a brush, depending on how you apply them is how they're gonna look on your eyes, but they have such versatility on them. I have heard drawbacks of some of these are repetitive and yes, I agree with that, but I do appreciate it because the repetitive eye shadows are the ones that are gonna use the most. So once one hits pan or goes, you still have another similar one in here, which allows you to continue to use this palette as a whole. Sometimes when I find that I reach for one shade over and over and over in a palette and either I hit pan on it or it goes quickly, I tend to kind of feel lost without that shade whenever I don't have it in that palette anymore. And I personally tend to not reach for it as much because now I'm reaching for more eyeshadows in replacement of that one. So I don't mind the repetitiveness in here. It's not a ton, but I do see why people don't like that. But overall, these shades are so small that it's not, it's, it's not a make it or break it for me. So I really, really do like this formula. I've always liked Lorox shadows, whether the old ones, the new ones, these are all nice. And I feel like they are a staple and there's something that you can use. And I believe these can get taken out of here. They're magnetic. So you can pull out and popped in whatever, repurpose or re pot some shades in here if that's what you want. But this is a really good palette and I really do like it. Up next is this one. I pulled out the Huda textured rose gold edition. This is the original one, not the revamped one that she came out with. I really did like the look that came out with this one. I will tell you the guys that these shimmers are very impactful. They kind of remind me of the shades you're getting in here, which is surprising because I've always mentioned that she got a lot of gripe out of this palette when it first came out. People didn't like it because of the texture, so on and so forth. 
And that's what you see nowadays in palettes anyway. I will say that the uh, mattes faded a little bit on my eyes, but that's understandable because of the age of this palette. But overall it did last. It's not a palette that I can wear for a barbecue or all day long outside because I could see it fading as far as the mattes. The shimmers did stay. So that was a good thing because mainly I would reach for this for the shimmer sh shades of it. It is a pretty palette. I, I will say that I would have to use this more quickly than later because it is getting older. So I will see there be a point where I would have to declutter this because of the quality. Let's move on to Dominique uh, Latte 2. This is such a beautiful palette. Very, very beautiful. It's enough for what I want in the summertime. So you're getting all your neutrals, but it's like rich neutrals, which I love in the summer because it really stands out with the tan that I end up getting. But you're also getting these beautiful pops of shades in here. So if I wanna add a little pink, a little uh, green, or even this mustard yellow, super beautiful, super subtle to a look. Very, very beautiful palette. I, I do like this one a lot. I, I was very impressed with it. Some of these like these are a little bit gritty, but I can make them work either wetting them or putting them on with a glitter glue. And it works really, really nice. These mattes are amazing, rich, pigmented to the point. You don't get a lot of powder kick up with these. And it just reminds me how much I really enjoy. Like she does a good job with these. I'm not gonna lie, she does a good job. And I will say that uh, even now her newer ones, I, I do enjoy. Speaking of one of her new ones, I pulled out the Dominique Essential one. Now these are uh, hard plastic versus her cardboard that she used to have. This one is a, another beautiful one. Now I like this one because again of the colors. I will say that these shimmers up here are a thicker formula, but for me, I actually enjoy that mainly because I have very oily lids. So it allows the shadow, one, to last, two, to melt with the oils on my eyelids and make it look more like a cream shadow that I put on more instead of a textured shadow. If you have dry eyelids, you may not like this formula, but for somebody who has very oily lids, it is one of my favorites to wear in the summertime, especially in the summertime because it just throughout the day looks even better than when I put it on in the beginning. These mattes are beautiful, staple to the point. I really do like this. Nothing wrong with it. You guys can see where I'm going with these color stories because this is what I'm reaching for more in the summertime with pops of colors in them. Like this would be a really nice pop of color. All right, Sydney Grace's Love's Journey. This is one of the first ones I pulled out, one of the first ones I used this past uh, month and my goodness. Oh, I love this. This is something that I can use every single day all year long and be content. It has those rustic colors that I love. It has the neutral grays in here, like these gray cool tones and the neutrals in the center. So this could be a palette that you can have all year long and not feel like it only leans for one season or one tone for the year. This palette kind of describes me in general. I can go either warm, I can go cool, I can go neutral, I can do it all, all year round and not be upset with that. I don't lean one way or the other, prefer one way over the other. I notice I prefer warmer tones in the summer, cooler tones in the winter, which makes sense. And I, this palette just gives me everything. The only thing is you're only getting six shimmers and the rest are matte. So if that's something that bothers you, then you're not getting as much shimmers, but I think this is a perfect balance between both. Two shimmers, three mattes per row per look if that's the way you want to do it or bounce around like I do all the time. So yeah, this is really, really good. I think they did such a wonderful job with this palette. It, I could see it for a lot of different reasons, a lot of different occasions. This is the last neutral palette that I used this past month and is actually the one that I am wearing today. This was the last one I needed to use before I could do this video, obviously. This is the NARS Summer Lights. This is so boring, so to the point, but I love it. Look how beautiful my eye look. It looks effortless. It was effortless. Two shadows, one and done. So you're getting four shades in here a highlighter and a bronzer. The bronzer, no, it's not considered uh, Laguna. It's a different, these two are different tones, but the beauty of this is that you can use these as eyeshadows. I use this in my crease mixed in with this shade. I use this all over the lid mixed with this one. So I only use four different colors in here, but I came out with this look and it's so effortless. This is truly one of those palettes that if I were to travel over the summer or somebody who would travel often throughout the summer, didn't want a lot of fussing around with my eye look, this is something that I could pull out because it has the warmer tones, it has cooler tones and the neutrals at the bottom, 
bronzer and highlight all at the same time one and done go with the flow i really really like this one no powder kick up really no powder kick up this is gonna last me forever. We all know that NARS's powders are so well made. They last a really long time. They don't lose their pigmentation. They don't really get that crumbly. I've never had an issue with any of my palettes getting crumbly, less pigmented, less able to stay on my eyes. It, this is an older palette. I even have the one that's a cooler version. Very, very beautiful, you guys. So boring but so good at the same time. All right, the last three palettes had a little bit more color in them, you guys, because I need you to pull things in with color, you guys know. So I pulled in the Anastasia Carly Bible palette. Now, a lot of people that I watch have decluttered this, gotten rid of this out of their life, and I really wanted to know why, and I pulled this back out to check it out, and you guys, I don't understand why. These are beautiful on the eyes. The formula is really good. And I really like the fact that you can get different variety of looks in here without it seeming like you're using one palette. So you can get a little bit of a warmer tone look, a cooler tone look, a very colorful look if you wanted to, very subtle look, all in one palette. And these, like this one's a flippy shade in here. This one has like flexes of sparkle in it so it could really shine for you. So I, I like this palette. I don't understand why many people got rid of it. I think this is a palette that was misunderstood didn't get its fame, it didn't get its moment in the makeup industry and I feel like it's very misunderstood and a lot of people just got rid of it, you know, disowned it, just put it to the side, never care to really look into it to really see what it's saying to you. Because I really like it. I, I don't get why people got rid of this one. I really liked it. So I had a lot of fun with this one. Really had a lot of fun with the look I came out with. Here's another one that I felt the same way about. This is the Urban Decay Cyber one. Another palette that I felt was very, very misunderstood and so unique to what Urban Decay has been coming out with recently. So different. And I fell in love with this palette. I really did. I was just like, dang, I should use you more. My goodness. This palette is more of like that one and done kind of palette or a two-tone look where you get, put a crease and then something all over the lid. And that's what I did with this palette. There's so much in here. It's it just goes so many different ways. You got these flippy shades in here. You got these glitter toppers in here. You got these like metallic-y, it, it, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like warm, cool, in the middle. It's like funky, but it's so neat. Like the packaging, it goes with it. It's like everywhere, but not everywhere all at the same time. Like I don't know how to describe it. It's so cool. I really, really like this palette. I can pull this out and just one, two tones, I'm good to go. I don't even need to fuss and mess with it. And the formula is really nice. Like there is nothing wrong with this. I could see how some people didn't like it because it's more of a topper, one shadow look. It's not really a palette where you're pulling out three, four shades in here to make a whole look like what I did. It's more of like a subtle statement or it could be a bold statement, but it's very, very to the point. And I like that. I really do like that. So this one surprised me again, I'm liking palettes that people just didn't care for. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Last but not least, I pulled out the Pat McGrath Utopian palette. So this one, you guys, this one, so beautiful, but it dawned on me that as soon as I got my color story from my Pan Those Eyeshadows, that whole entire color story can come out of here. That whole entire color story I got, if you haven't seen that video, check it out, is literally this whole palette. I can do almost the identical look, very similar vibe to my four shades in my pan, those eyeshadows using just this palette. It just shocked me. And this is why I did that one video where I was explaining to you guys why do people get rid of discontinued or limited edition items when things can be duped as far as the vibes, not exactly the same formula, not exactly the same color to the T, but the vibe of it, it's the same. And when I pulled this out to play with it, I'm like, this is this is exactly my color story. <laughs> so if I wanted to just want, if I want that color story again in my life, I just pull out this palette. Beautiful, nothing wrong with it. Very, very different from what Pat McGrath normally does, but I really like the color that I got, like the look that I got out of it. And I'm like, ah, there is my Pan Those Eyeshadows color story. So this is a beautiful one. I see why a lot of people like the Utopian one. Alrighty, you guys. So 
those are all the palettes I pulled out this past month. All of them only got one use. Like I said, I got a little lazy. It's not for any other reason. It's just, I got lazy. I wanted to use my my Project 50 uses palettes more instead of these, but I, I wanted to, you know, incorporate these still and really get use out of them at least once. Once is better than none and I can rotate through them. For June, July, and most likely August, what I want to do is reach more for single potted items. I have been neglecting my pigments. I've been neglecting my single shadows. And in the summertime, like I mentioned, I'm more of like this kind of girl where I just do two shadows and I'm good to go. So I feel like me pulling out my singles may help me out with this. I know I'm trying to reach for more of my palettes, trying to justify having the amount of palettes that I do have, but it's also, um, I'm realizing I'm neglecting my singles. And in my defense, in the summer times where I reach for my singles the most anyway. One pigment can do multiple things on my eyes that I don't need to pull out a palette for. I can wet the shadow, make it very bold, and then bring it up in the crease as a matte and I'm good to go. So I am going to be pulling out singles. So next month you may get a mixture of palettes, maybe one or two palettes or opposite more palettes like five palettes i'm trying to limit the amount of palettes i'm going to bring out in order to allow myself to play more with singles singles are going to be a little bit easier to use with my pan those eyeshadows as well as my project 50 uses because those are actual palettes that i have out and i can incorporate the single however i choose to whatever color i choose to but i am really missing my singles i'm really missing pulling them out and using them even if it's just the shadow top or something so i'm gonna give myself leeway these next three months, cause it's for the summertime. So the next three months for June, July and August, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself that funness of just pulling out singles. Going through all, it's, they're all in here. So I'm just gonna go through them, pick whatever I want. There is no limit. Typically with my palettes, I would pull out no more than 10. For singles, I don't know how many because I could use a different single every day, use a single a few times a week. It all depends on what it is that I feel and how much makeup I'm using. Cause again, I also have to remind myself that in the summers where I use the least amount of makeup, I don't wear makeup almost every single day. Like I typically do the rest of the year because again, I am in sand, I am in dirt, I'm in a garden, I am in a body of water. I am outside having fun, just enjoying nature and just being outside with my kids. So I don't mind that at all. I'd rather be outside because I know that my time is limited outside, not only with nature because we only have a limited time of the year that it's warm, but also with my kids. My kids are getting older and I want to have those memories with them. So I really like and want to be present with them every time in any possible way I can, especially in the summer. Since I take the time to be home with them during the summer, why not enjoy them while they're still young and they still like being around me. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all that I have. I will list these down in the description box. Let me know in the comment section what palettes did you reach for this past month? Uh, what are you planning on doing for the summer? I like to hear because maybe you guys have an idea that maybe I could possibly use. That's all that I have for you guys. More videos on the screen for your enjoyment. Until then, 